in this next portion of uh, the webinar, we're in this next portion here, we are going to uh, look at our final touches, okay? So I'm gonna go through and we're gonna put those final details on this thing and those final tweaks and I'm gonna show you a few like critical tips and tricks. So if you've, if you've been sticking through this whole thing, this is where the real magic happens. I got a couple new ones that came up on this. So I'm gonna walk you through how to, how to give one more pass at this, make it look really good, and then we're gonna kick out the rendering and call it good. So let's check it out. I'll close out of this and we'll say okay here. And let's see, we're gonna go through and um, we're gonna first, let's go to build mode and I'm gonna bring the sun down again, you know, cause we're working uh, with this nighttime render. I wanna add some spotlights and I want those spotlights to just be planted, you know, in front of each one of these trees and I want them to like shine up at the building. All right, so, you know, let me, and let me say this too, like, there's two schools of thought here when it comes to lighting. You can either be super uh, real about it and just put a light where the light source goes, or you can be super artistic about it and just kind of paint the light. Okay, so we're being a little bit, uh, we're dancing the line on both like a hybrid strategy here. You know, if I had actually had a lighting plan, I probably would have built it because it's just as easy to build the real lighting plan as it is for me to make something up that is not real. So I would have built the real lighting plan, put in real lights, and then I would have dropped uh, lights in each one of those can lights or each one of those uh, fluorescent lights on the grid. But the point is, when I have a real lighting plan, I'm very accurate. But I can tell you that I also will be real about it and look at the, look at the image, and then I'll say, the whole building needs, just needs to be brighter. So let's just brighten it up. Let's just you know be an artist for a moment and put some lights where we want them, shine some more light on the building. Nothing wrong with that. We're, we're just you know selling the concept. We're not making a uh, photorealistic lighting study based on IES data. That is not what we're all about here. We're looking to just make a beautiful image that's gonna get people psyched about this project. So let's do that. Let's go to our objects and go to place. And we're gonna place from our lights and utilities. Now I'm on single placement and I'll just grab, uh, again, it doesn't matter. I'll just grab like this guy. This has a different kind of a unique profile to it. All right, and I'm gonna plant a light here and here and here um, and here and here. And you know, I might even do one out here. All right, now uh, let's see. I'm gonna use my select tool and I'm gonna, I've got one of these lights selected. On my advanced options up here, I can select all identical objects, all right? So there's my lights. Uh, I might lift those up off the ground just a little bit, all right? So see, they're, they're kind of picking up into this, the sky there. And then I'm gonna use this target light, all right? So I'll click target light. Now I can click on the building and look at that. Now it's like all those lights are like shining up at the building and it's throwing some cool shadows on here. And you know, maybe I want them to target this way. I don't know, like you can kind of click around and see what gives you, you know, the look that you want. And of course you could also like, you know, target some of them this way, uh, like right here, and then target these guys a little bit differently. All right, so I'll say okay, deselect all, and then I'm just gonna select, uh, if I hold control, I can select these three, and then I can do another target light and you know shine these up here so I don't know that's it's pretty cool like I, I think that that's gonna be kind of a, an interesting look we'll see where it gets us but that's gonna be detail number one is just throwing some more interesting shadows up onto uh, up onto the the building and let me do this too I'm gonna try another um, I actually didn't mess with this when I was uh, taking a look and writing this tutorial but um, I'm gonna select all identical objects and we're gonna set our shadows uh, to high. Look at that, that's super cool. So medium, is it makes them a little bit low and then dynamic, what's that all about? Oh, that's pretty cool too. So that's how you make those shadows move. Um, I'll just go with high because we're only working on a still, but how cool is that? I like that a lot. Just gives a different depth to the, the building. All right. Now, this one, I'm gonna hit deselect and uh, we're good to go there. 
Uh, let's see, let's, let's go with uh, the next final touch on this image is going to be emissive materials. Now these guys not glowing is definitely a missed opportunity. So I'm gonna go over here to my materials and click on this material seven. I'm gonna make it a standard material and that standard material is going to have on its settings, we're gonna make it emissive, all right? And also I need to give it a colorization and we're gonna make that color red. Like check that out. Like, and, and so now that all these lights are glowing. So that's super cool, right? Uh, but you wanna go easy on the emissive. So I can tell you that like just a little bit and it seemed to me that like um, 2 point five was the right amount. So like just a little bit, I'm gonna actually double click and type 2.5 enter. Now it, it might not be glowing as much as you want it to glow in build mode, but when I, when I dial up my lens flare, those are gonna come alive. Now, same thing down here, I'm gonna come in and, and set up our uh, emissive material, make it standard and uh, colorize it and make it emissive. So again, now all these guys are, are emissive. And I, I can tell you that uh, we did do a really nice blog post on Lumion lighting. Uh, it's been a couple years, but it's still very relevant. And I, I just broke down each of the different light types and uh, what, uh, what you can expect from them. So like a spotlight cast shadows, Omni lights don't, emissive, it won't, uh, it won't cast shadows. Uh, if you just really wanna dig in and understand each of the different lighting types or light types inside of Lumion. Uh, we have a blog post on that one and it's uh, just <laughs> sift through the archives there. It's maybe uh, two or three pages back, uh, but it's, it's uh, called like light types in Lumion or something like that. All right, again, uh, emissive, let's go with like 2.5. You don't wanna go overboard on any lighting. Uh, and actually for that matter, I'll just comment briefly on our objects. You know, our, our actual spotlights are all exactly the same and they're all set to 300. So I don't mess with that brightness all that much. I can tell you for sure, you don't want to dial uh, the brightness way up. Um, and you know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all of them. So I'll select all identical objects. And I mean, you know, that brightness gets way out of hand and so, really what's best is like stick to the defaults of like 300 and, um, and, and if, if anything back it down and, and use your uh, effects to bring it back to life. So, uh, but you know, keep everything at kind of a default low level because otherwise you start battling and, and like making one thing brighter and then you gotta make something else brighter to, to make it, you know, uh, in the same realm of, of uh, lighting up your model and it just turns into something that's really tricky to, to get it right. So just, if you're uh, not familiar, just leave the, the default settings alone. All right, so our uh, emissive materials are hooked up. We're good there. Now, this one, this next tip for you is uh, check out these people when I look at this image, all right? Like the people are all dark. Well, we're gonna be artists here and we're gonna drop an omni on each one of this, these groupings of people. So the way it looks now, and then we're gonna go over here, and here's like this group of girls crossing, uh, you know, crossing the street. We don't want it to look like they're in danger. So I'm gonna go with just a real lightweight, simple Omni light, and I'm gonna place it, and if I hold H, I can kind of lift it up like that, and I'm just gonna drop it right here, and then let's you know, head over here, and this guy, um, I'm gonna click it like kind of right in front of him, and uh, let's see, these guys right here, I'll do like one there, one there, one for them, one for them. And just get these people glowing, you know? I, I don't want them to be like uh, in danger or appear to be like super dark. And you know, it, it's, uh, it's faking the lighting, but you know, it's okay. That's what this is all about is just, uh, you know, the, making the pretty picture. So now all these people are lit up and now tell me what you think about this image, you know, when I go back to photo and now like those people no longer look like they're, they're in the shadows and they're in danger, you know? Um, it, it's just a much better look, okay? Now, uh, the last thing, uh, and this is just, you know, like, you, this is all personal preference and whenever I'm doing these tutorials, I always go a little bit overboard. I mean, we don't, we wouldn't, 
Uh, I, I would doubt that a client would have us, you know, put like a gigantic moon in the background, but uh, you know, you can go nuts on that, and uh, you got to find the heading for the moon uh, and the moon size. If you make it real big, uh, I might not be able to find this right now. It's a little tricky. Um, there you go. There it is. And then bring the moon size down. You know, so you can like get the moon in the background. Uh, you can get like, uh, you know, if you hold shift, you can kind of move that in a different, uh, a different speed. Um, so let me get the moon height up there. That's kind of cool. Uh, you could go and add in also your sky and clouds. Uh, I kind of got used to not using these because I use the real skies so much. But you know, I forgot how cool the Lumion skies. Uh, you know, the the you know default clouds are. You know, they're they're pretty cool. Uh, it seems to me that like low clouds, you want to back off of those and and stick more with like the high clouds. Uh, those seem to be a little bit more subtle. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to do is go into build mode and I'm just going to throw some uh, fireworks in the background. Now I can tell you that I got these fireworks from formfonts.com. These guys are great. Uh, this is where I get a ton of my models. So like if you just go to formfonts.com and search for uh, fireworks. There you go. Now all these guys, I got a bunch of them downloaded already, but um, anyway, they're super easy to use. I can just go to import new model and I'm going to go to my visualization resources components and uh, we have like miscellaneous effects and that's where I keep like we have a, you know, a rainbow and uh, some pretty cool fireworks. So uh, I'll just grab I'm not even sure which one's which. So Fireworks 3, we'll bring that in. And then uh, I'm going to hold H, and I can kind of scoot that up. I'll place that one. And then, uh, you know, you can use H again, bring that up higher. And uh, if I use my uh, materials, actually, I'm sorry, let me import one more of those fireworks. So import, and I'll bring in that first one as well and say OK and then drop those in the background. And uh, you know, that's fine, we'll just use that many. And I'm gonna like, these are not gonna be face me uh, or billboards, you know, they're gonna, I, I need them to kind of manually face where they go, like that. And then I need these uh, fireworks to kind of lift up in the sky. You know, that's gonna be another thing, although I, I think they're probably in decent shape there. And we need to make them emissive. So I'm going to go to standard and just dial up their emissiveness of touch like that and make it standard and dial up the emissiveness a touch. All right, so now we got some fireworks in the background. All I'm getting at is that there's a lot of options. It's super quick to add some of these kind of fun touches to your renderings. Actually, I did pretty decent there. So that's pretty cool. Those are the final touches on this one. Uh, let's render this out at 1920 by 1080, and I'm gonna call this image two. All right, fire that one off, and look at those shadows uh, of the trees up on the building. The people are lit up. Um, you know, I didn't even tweak the lens flare yet, but that's what you would use to really get the, um, to get these uh, different lights and things glowing. Uh, let's, let's try that real quick. I'll go back to, uh, let's see, my lens flare, and then like the master brightness, you know, that's how you get it to really blow up. Um, but you know what I found that was pretty cool is the streak count. If you bring it all the way down, you know, you can see there's a lot of streaks. If you bring it down, uh, it really, it, it just does like, you know, straight up and down streaks, which I thought was pretty cool. And so, you know, you can kind of see a little bit of streaking, um, light streaking up here. Um, and once it renders, you know, it seems to kind of pop a little bit more, but you know, I'll bring up the master brightness. Me personally, I just like an image that's, that's I would rather it be overexposed than underexposed. Uh, a, a bright image is definitely has a more positive impact than a dreary dim image, but you know, find the balance. But uh, let's render this one more time. I'm just going to overwrite image two, and then we're going to compare them and see what you know what kind of a difference we made on that final final touch there. So yeah, when we render, you can definitely see more of that that um, lens flare happening. So 
you know, I, I would definitely, uh, if this was truly a client render, I would, I would probably back that off. But anyway, here's where we were. And uh, let's see, uh, let's see. So this is the first image that we just kind of on the first pass. And that's where we got to with a lot of extra stuff going on. But um, anyway, point of this is to show you what's possible. I want you to understand that like, you know, the, the techniques, and I do exaggerate things. I do take it to like, you know, a, a, an exaggerated level so that you can actually see what's happening. But now it's on you, you know, you, you understand this stuff, watch this again and again, and then you can dial it back and you can use these, these techniques and um, these tips and tricks in the right place.